Today we'll be exploring Fort Morgan, Alabama. Spanning nearly 500 acres, construction began on Fort Morgan in 1819, completed in 1834. Fort Morgan was active during four wars, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, and World War II. The fort is known as the Guardian of Mobile Bay. The massive fort contains more than 40 million bricks and pays tribute to the skilled masons eight days before Alabama was seceded from the Union. From John B. Todd, I took four companies of Alabama volunteers and captured the fort before the dawn on January 1864. The Confederates then proceeded to strengthen the defense of Mobile Bay. The key point was the main steel channel opposite Fort Morgan, as this was the only approach where water was deep enough to permit major warships to pass. Within this area, the Confederates placed 18 of the fort's heaviest including two 7-inch Brook rifles and two British-made 8-inch Blakely rifles so that they could bear on the channel. They also built trenches east of the fort to impede further any attack via land. They complemented the land defense with a small flotilla consisting of the Ram Tennessee, three gunboats, Morgan, Gay, and Selma. During the war, Fort Morgan provided protective fire for blockade runners. All 17 vessels that ran out of the bay Included capture, and it did 19 to 21 in the Union soldiers were reserved in the Sand Island Lighthouse, spying Fort Morgan. Fort fired on the position, destroying the lighthouse. During the Battle of Mobile Bay on August 5, 1864, Union naval forces were able to get past Fort Morgan and enter the bay. They captured the sea and Selma, forced the beaches to burning. Following two weeks' siege from sea. Land. The fort was surrendered forced on August 23, 1864. The attack on Fort Morgan is known as one of the most intense bombardments recorded during the Civil War. On August 23, this is where the famous saying comes from, damn the torpedoes, and went full speed ahead to win the battle, said Rear Admiral David Craig. Once the fort was in Union hands, the Union used it as a base for reconnaissance. So it was a staging area. Battle of Spanish Fort and the Battle of Fort Bridge, which occurred just days before General Robert E. Lee surrendered. After the U.S. declared war on Germany in April 1917, the fort took on the task of training the men of the coast artillery and modern weapons. The fort also trained Field E. Titan. In 1920, the fort received four British 9.2 inch towers. These guns were abandoned and later scrapped in 1924 when the Army abandoned the fort to the base of the river quickly. During World War I, the Army had established a radio transmitting and receiving station at Fort Morgan as part of a nationwide Morse code group. The transmitter had the call letters WUR 11. In April 1942, the Army reoccupied the fort, constructing an adjacent airfield. Initially, the Coast Guard artillery brought five model 1918 155mm guns to the fort. The Army placed two on top of Fort Morgan on mounts that permitted 360 inch fire. The remaining three guns stood on the fort's parade grounds. The War Department turned Fort Morgan over to the state of Alabama in 1946, and the Army again abandoned the fort in 1946. Now let's take a look around at this beautiful view from Fort Morgan. If you're coming to Fort Morgan, just be prepared to climb along the stairs. Here you can see on top of one of the mountains, you can look around to the fort itself. You could just imagine what the fort looked like when it was actually being used. <clears throat> Some people say the fort's haunted. Didn't feel anything when I was there, but who knows. Here you can see the beautiful Mobile Bay. And straight across from there is another fort on the other side. If you plan on visiting Fort Morgan, it's a little bit of a drive, from, especially from the interstate. Uh, from Gulf Shores, a little bit of a way down Fort Morgan Road. Or if you're in Mobile, you can always go down and take the ferry all the way across. It comes right out. This structure, Battery Thomas, was built in 1898. 
could not imagine the amount of concrete that went into these ravines where the gun mounts, which overlooked the main. Quick read for about Ben Thomas itself. Some gangs there. Speaking of course, here some of them are very, very steep. These are, I'm guessing, with the ammo rooms. I'm not sure what this was for. It was like a really dark tunnel that went all the way from it. Went to the left. Spooky first walking in, but of course we're going to go on in there anyway. I'm sure there was some kind of lift or something here originally that would lift the ammo up to the top. And be careful right to get kids that can just set right off the front. There's no guard rails or anything like that. Now let's get out of here real quick and head on over to the tunnel entrance to a fort. Of course, like I said, there is no power or lights or any of these forts. Of course, you gotta be out of here before dark anyway, and I'm sure at night time this place is really creepy. Look at all the hand laid bricks in the fort where the hinges used to be for the gates and taking it. You can see there's drains down both sides. Throughout the fort, embedded in the concrete, you'll see like railroad tracks. At least that was for moving ammo and stuff like that around. It's a pretty long tunnel you have to go through. Trying to get many people in our video, but sometimes it happens. I right, going down this tunnel three times. Finally, I gave it the front of the fort. And that's looking back over to where we was with Battery Thomas. There's some of the tracks I was talking about before. I'm not sure if it was for doors or pushing stuff in and out or what that was for. I can't imagine how many people lived in this space. Go ahead and take a tour up and to the left here. And by the way, this camera makes this look a whole lot brighter inside than what it actually is. You walk through some of those just even in the daytime it's just about pitch black dark. Yeah wasn't too bad right here, but when you get on in the back, it's pretty dark. So many bricks in this port. Would have recorded audio while I was here, but it was so windy that day, you couldn't record anything while you were there. There's a couple of areas that they do have blocked off, like the one we're coming to now. Actually, look at the window and see the cannons in there. It looks, I don't know if that's a tunnel back there or what it is. I really couldn't make it out. Something kind of goes in and down in the back. Coming up next darker room. Tried to explore everything I could. I'm sure I missed some stuff. Coming to here is actually got wood up or come on through and this is one of the really dark rooms coming up here. I really had to kinda of look at the camera just to see inside the room. See it's pitch black. I'm not sure what these facilities were used for here. I'm trying to find a map of actually how what each room is for. Here's some of the really steep stairs I was telling you about. You know, they they're steeper in person than they look on the camera. Well, that's it for this video. The next video we'll finish exploring the fort and we'll go explore the museum. They have some very interesting stuff in there. I will get better at making these videos. Please like and subscribe. Please comment on other places we.
we'll also be doing funny family on this channel also thank you for watching